Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me for uh, a new series here on the channel, the Outer Limits Review Series. Today, I'm going to be talking about Season 1, Episode 1, The Galaxy Being, written and directed by Leslie Stevens, and starring Cliff Robertson, Jacqueline Scott, and Lee Phillips. And I have to say, this being the first episode, uh, it kind of sets a tone for, a ser for the series in a way. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I have to say The Galaxy Being is a very solid episode overall. It's definitely very good and makes me look forward to watching more episodes in the series. I do have a few issues with the episode here and there, and there are a few dated elements. But when you consider that The Outer Limits was uh, created in the 1960s, I think at least this episode holds up pretty well overall. So I'll go through the episode, uh, talk about some of the scenes and uh, a lot of the things I liked and a few of the things that uh, I wasn't as wild about. So we started a radio station and uh, there's a man named Alan there and we can tell he's using a lot of power but we're not sure uh, yet what that's all about. We're also introduced to a DJ named Buddy and a lady named Carol who we'll find out later is uh, Alan's wife and uh, it turns out that Buddy is concerned because he's broadcasting but uh, it seems like the station's not at full power and uh, they don't have a lot of range so they're thinking that this you know might hurt financially, things like that. So Carol says she'll talk to Alan about it. She seems to be a little bit annoyed and irritated at this point, which is understandable. So then we get to uh, meet Alan a little bit more. We uh, learn that he's using a lot of the power from the station to research some kind of microwave noise. Uh, you kind of just got to go with it. It's kind of interesting. Uh, Carol also seems concerned about their personal relationship. She seems to think that uh, Alan's... Uh, Kind of obsessiveness with this is hurting their relationship, but he just seems interested in his experiments. So at this point, we go to the next scene. Alan is still working on his project, and uh, it seems like somehow he kind of uh, walks right into a discovery. He makes contact with an alien. I have to say, the alien looks pretty solid for 1960s TV. It's a pretty effective design uh, and special effect. You know, it looks a little dated by today's standard, but there's a charm to 1960 special effects in my opinion and uh, I thought that uh, you know the alien itself was fine um, so Alan tries to communicate with this alien and uh, this takes a while probably a little bit too long I thought some of these scenes here kind of dragged a little bit this is kind of typical 60s TV pacing wasn't always the best and I thought it hurt the episode a little bit but overall these scenes are important to the episode so it's okay I guess so eventually uh, communication does happen and they chat and uh, it turns out they're both doing illegal work, uh, which is kind of interesting. That kind of keeps everything in secret, which is actually an important part of the episode. So uh, Alan is explaining certain things to the alien, like the human appearance, things like that. They definitely look much, much different. Um, the alien also says they're made differently, basically, you know, um, structurally. The alien also says their life cycle is basically different, which is also important to the plot. Then they have some more philosophical discussion about a lot of different things, which uh, which was fine. I thought it was interesting. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Um, so at this point, um, there's this party for Alan that's going to be going on, and Carol insists that Alan goes to this party because it's in his honor. He really doesn't want to go, but he finally agrees when she says she'll bring the party to him if he doesn't go. So, uh... Alan not wanting anyone, you know, to find out about his discovery, he agrees to go. It also turns out that Buddy is going to this party, and this is significant because there's this guy, Eddie, uh, filling in for him at the station, and uh, this Eddie character is just a plot device, I have to say, but at least a decent plot device. Um, so anyway, we go to this party next, and uh, Alan is getting this award, basically. He still wants to leave the party, but Carol wants him to stay. In the meantime, Buddy is hooking up with this girl, and uh, I have to say Buddy has uh, good taste, in my opinion. I'll just leave it at that. So he's outside with this girl, and conveniently he hears the radio, and it seems like some weird stuff's going on. Eddie's fooling around with the power at the station, and uh, Eddie, not being the smartest Outer Limits character, uh, messes with the power so much he inadvertently frees our alien friend. So the alien goes on the loose and starts uh, killing, but by accident, that's very important. I think his radiation is what's doing all the damage. He, like, flips over a car, things like that. So at this point, Buddy goes to get Alan, knowing something's wrong. Alan's calling the station, but there's no answer. In the meantime, our alien pal is still out on the town, uh, just exploring, I guess. Uh, Carol's upset that Alan, 
you know, has kind of left her behind, basically. But things really get out of control when our alien uh, friend goes to the party. So, uh, Alan, at this point, explains to the alien to stay away because the radiation will hurt them. So, he gets the alien to uh, basically follow him. Um, at this point, the police get involved, which makes sense. They talk to Buddy, and uh, he tells them the situation what's going on. In the meantime, Alan's following, uh, the alien, excuse me, is following uh, Alan and Carol, and Carol's still very upset about the whole situation. Um, the alien explains that uh, his fate is that he's going to have to be destroyed because he broke the law, which I thought was kind of interesting. So at this point, he and Alan are talking, and the police arrive. Uh, we also find out that Eddie's a goner at this point in the episode. Uh, so at this point, Alan tells Carol to go outside and explain everything to the police. She gets shot by mistake, and the alien is able to heal her, which feels a little bit like a plot device, but I understand what they were going for. They wanted to show uh, that the alien was uh, really good and had these type of healing powers, that he didn't mean any harm to anybody. So at this point, the alien comes out. Uh, they all try and shoot the alien, the police, uh, the authorities, things like that. But, of course, shooting the alien doesn't work. And the alien basically um, destroys the tower. Um, it was like a communications tower or something, which basically uh, leaves him stuck there, I believe. And he also gives some valuable uh, lessons about, you know, peace, understanding, things like that to the humans. Now, I have to say, well, I really appreciate this message and... Uh, you know, I think it's very noble of a 60s TV show to tackle some of these issues. Uh, the message does feel a little abrupt and a little bit unearned. But like I said, I can allow it because of, uh, you know, I respect what Outer Limits was trying to do here, especially when you consider the time that this episode was filled. So at this point, basically, we get a last scene, which is rather effective, I have to say, where the alien um, basically disintegrates and says that his future is unknown. But we know that uh, he will live on in some form. We just don't know um, what that will be. So overall, I did think The Galaxy Being was a very solid opening episode. I like the psychology behind it and some of the complexities of the plot. There are a few plot contrivances that don't really work, and some of the pacing's a little off. I'm interested to see if um, that will be the case with a lot of Outer Limits episodes. But overall, I was uh, very satisfied with The Galaxy Being, and I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. Overall, I do recommend watching this episode of The Outer Limits if you are a fan of classic science fiction shows. And uh, I do look forward to watching more episodes and see where they lead. So 3.5 out of 5 for The Galaxy Being. And as always, thank you very much for watching.